What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm John the Video Guy and in this video I'm going to be going over a lot of cool masking effects inside After Effects. Whether you're brand new to After Effects or an intermediate or advanced user, I think there's a lot to gain in this tutorial as we see how to create this cool skyline replacement inside After Effects. The assets are down in the video description if you want to follow along and without further ado let's dive into After Effects. So what I'm going to do is go up to Composition, New Composition, and we'll create this CLE skyline. I'm leaving my composition at 1920 by 1080. 10 seconds is good. Click OK. The first thing I'm going to do is drag in my skyline. This is just a photo of downtown Cleveland from Wikipedia. Now when you create a mask inside After Effects, there's a few different ways you can go about it. There's two different tools. You'll notice that there's the pen tool and the rectangle tool at the top. In this case, for a more complicated mask, I recommend using the pen tool. That way you can really fine tune your points. So to create a mask, click on your layer in the timeline, then grab the pen tool. The keyboard shortcut for the pen tool is G, and then start clicking inside your composition panel. So click first to actually create your first point, and then click again to make a second point, and then you can continue drawing your mask. Now you notice we're pretty zoomed out here, and one great thing that you can do when you're actually creating a mask is actually switch between tools. So to switch to the zoom tool, you can just hit Z on your keyboard and then actually draw a marquee selection around your area to actually zoom in. Now you can see we're kind of off here at the very beginning. So you can actually change the point of this mask by switching to the selection tool by clicking V and you can click and drag on these points to actually realign them here. Now I'm finding that the pink color is a little difficult to see and you can actually change the color of the mask by unscrolling down in the timeline, unscroll mask, and then click on this color. You can actually change the mask to a different color. So maybe green is a little bit better to actually see around this subject here. Now you'll notice that I accidentally clicked off and if you want to continue actually editing your mask, what you can do is click back on the layer click on the last vertex point, then click G, and then you can continue actually creating your mask. You'll notice when you click and drag, you'll actually make a curved vertex point. And this is helpful if you're going around certain like circles or curves. So in this example here, I'm going over this hump, and then you can actually click, and that way you can actually see it's actually a curved mask. And when you click off and you click back on, you can actually adjust these handlebars to actually you know, get around the curve more precisely. So that's how that feature works. And if you want to convert one of these vertex points to a curved point, what you can do is hold down on the pen tool and go to convert vertex tool, and this will actually convert it to a curved vertex point. Now I'm gonna undo that, but that's how you do that. Now you notice we're getting to the left side here and to actually go over it, what you can do is switch to your hand tool by hitting H, and you can click and drag to move over. And then just switch back to your pen tool by clicking G and just hold down on the vertex tool and go to pen tool. And now you're back on it. You can click on your last vertex point and you can continue drawing your mask. Now one other thing you can do when you're actually drawing a mask inside After Effects is you can actually draw a perfectly straight line. To do that, click on your vertex point, hold down shift, and when you click you'll notice that you create a straight line going up here. That's very helpful if you're working with a lot of straight lines. You just want a solid straight line to go across. That's pretty much it how to actually work with the masks here. Now I'm just gonna speed up this video and actually complete the selection of the skyline. Now I'm at the end of my mask. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, click G, hold down Shift, and then just click to make straight lines around the bottom here. And then to close off the mask, what you'll notice is when you hover over the first vertex point, you'll notice that there's a little circle. Just make sure that's there and then click and then that will close off the mask. This is what's called a closed path. I'll zoom in here and you'll notice when we toggled, toggled the transparency grid that you can actually see through it. So we've successfully cut out the Cleveland skyline here. Now that we actually have our mask, let's explore some of the settings down below. You'll notice that under the masks option here, if you untwirl, you have a few different options. You can choose to feather the edges, change the mask opacity, you can actually animate the path of it and actually expand the mask. So if we zoom in here, we can actually see what we did. So for example here, if we bring up the feather, you'll notice that it feathers the edge. And if you want to actually expand the mask, you can actually expand or decrease the edge, the bound of the mask itself. In this case, since it's a skyline here, I'm just going to feather out the edges maybe by two pixels 
and maybe change the expansion to like negative one. That way it kind of cuts in a little bit more and feathers it out a little bit so it's not as hard of an edge. You can actually rename masks by clicking on it. You can right click and go to rename. You can also hit return or enter on your keyboard and that will also allow you to change the name of the mask. In this case, I'm gonna name it Skyline. Now one other cool thing about masks is that you can actually add masks to effects. So for example here in this example, maybe we want the skyline to remain orange, but we want the water to be blue. Well, we can actually add a coloring effect that changes the image to blue, but draw a mask so only that the water is blue. So to do that, I'm gonna go up into effects and presets and type in hue and saturation. Click and drag this to your layer. And then in effects controls, just change the color to a nice blue color. And now what we can do is actually draw a second mask to this layer. So we're gonna click on the layer, zoom out a little bit. And this time we're gonna actually use the rectangle tool. So click on the rectangle tool and very similar to the pen tool, just click and drag to actually draw out a rectangle inside your composition panel. And this will add a second mask. You'll see that there's another mask down below underneath the skyline here. And we can rename this, we'll rename this water. And now to actually add this mask to that effect, what you'll wanna do is actually drop down effects, drop down hue and saturation. You'll notice at the very bottom, there's compositing options. And next to it, there's a little plus button. What you can do is actually click the plus button and change the mask reference to water. And what you'll notice here is actually the effect is only being applied to the water mask, leaving the skyline untouched. So that's a cool way to actually designate an effect to a certain mask. Now we can go under water, Maybe we feather it out a little bit. And one other thing to keep in mind when you're working with masks is if you click on the layer, you'll actually notice that you're, when you click and drag on a vertex point, you're actually changing that one vertex point. But say if you wanted to actually, you know, click and actually move this rectangle around, to do that, you'll actually want to click on the mask itself inside the timeline panel. And now you'll notice that when you click and drag, you're actually moving the entire mask where if you just click on the layer with no mask selected, you're actually changing the vertex point. Now one other thing, when you actually click on the mask, double click in the composition panel, and you'll notice that a transformation box appears. So this actually allows you to actually retransform the actual masks itself. Now you'll also notice down here that you have options. Right now, both masks are an additive, meaning that it's actually adding or if you click subtract, it's doing the opposite. So you'll notice, you know, in the Skyline version, it's actually masking out the opposite of it. You'll notice that there's inverted. And essentially, if you have subtract and inverted selected, it's doing, it's basically adding it. So those are a few other options you might want to explore if you're working with masks. All right, so now that we have our Skyline here, let's actually start compositing it. I'm gonna go back to my project panel, and we'll click and drag our sky underneath. And now we have a nice sky element. But say if I wanted to actually add the stars to the water, what we can do is click on the layer, hit Command D. This will duplicate the layer, we'll bring it above it, and we'll click S on our keyboard to bring up the scale. And we'll unlink the X and Y values, and we'll change the Y value to negative 100. And what this will do is essentially flip itself. Now what we can do is actually click on the layer, and we'll grab our rectangle tool again, and we'll draw a mask just around the water. And now what we can do is untwirl the mask and drop down the opacity quite a bit, maybe to 25%, and feather the edge maybe to 100 pixels. Now when we zoom in here, you'll see that we have a mirrored stars effect on top of the water. Next, let's add some water. So in the description, I added a water asset. We'll drag and drop this on here. And what we'll do is we'll toggle our switches here, and we'll actually change it to a 3D layer and actually bend it so that we're manipulating it in 3D space. We'll, so we'll scale it down a little bit. We'll click R to bring up rotation. We'll rotate it. We'll bring up P to actually bring up the position and we'll position it down a little bit. Bring up scale and we'll actually scale the sides up a little bit. There we go, that's looking good. And another way that you can actually add masks inside After Effects is that you can actually click on the layer. And when you click on the rectangle tool, you can actually double click. And what this will do essentially is actually add a mask to the bounding shape of the actual layer. So you'll notice that even though we turned the layer into a 3D layer and changed its orientation, it actually applies the mask to the bounds of the layer. Now what we can do is drop down our mask properties, feather the edges a little bit, 
and maybe drop down the opacity to about 30. What I'll also do is actually drag the stars up above the water. And now we have a nice water and stars element inside our composition. Next, let's actually add a shooting star element. And this is a pretty cool way to use masks inside After Effects. What I'm gonna to do to create a shooting star is go up to layer, new solid. And we'll name this shooting star, click okay. And the plugin I'm using to do this effect is called Saber by Video Copilot. If you wanna follow along, a link to it is down in the video description. But essentially what this does, it gives you a beam that you can really you know, play with and mess around and do a lot of cool things with. And in this case, we're gonna change some of the settings. So we're gonna change the preset to thin since we only need really a thin line. The color's fine, but we're gonna change the glow intensity to 35. We'll change the spread to 0.6 and the bias and the size to 0.7. And what's really gonna sell this effect, under customized core, change the end size to 200% and change the start size to 0%. Now you can see that it has a tail in it. Now this is cool, but how do we use masks? Well, what you can do is actually click on the solid and actually grab your pen tool and you can actually create what's called an open path. So before we were creating closed paths, but in this case, we're just gonna actually just click and draw a straight line and just leave it open and click off in your timeline. And now we just have this mask that just has two vertex points and we're gonna actually add the saber to that mask. So under customize core next to core type, you can actually change it from saber to layer masks. And now what you'll notice is it's actually putting that saber effect into that open path mask that we just created. So that's another cool way to use masks. Just experiment some effects you can actually add masks to. So it just really comes down to which effects actually you are able to use masks for. All right, so let's animate it now. I'm gonna change the end offset to 0%. I'm gonna keyframe the start offset. So we're gonna hit the stopwatch, go out to one second forward and change it up to 100%. Then we're gonna go back to about 15 frames and then change the end offset, keyframe it, and then go out to one second, and then change that to 100%. And now when we play this back, you'll notice that we have a shooting star come in and then it animates out. Now this is cool, but one other thing we can do, and another way you can actually manipulate a mask, say if you wanted it to go in the opposite direction, well, what you can do is actually click on the layer, grab your selection tool, actually click on a vertice, and then right click and go to mask and shape path and you can actually set this as the first vertex. Now you'll notice when we do this, the shooting star actually goes in the opposite direction. So that's another way that you can use masks and manipulate the controls here. All right, let's change it so that we can actually see it over our skyline. Under render settings, untwirl it. Next to composite settings, change it from black to transparent. Now the shooting star will be over our skyline. Another way that you can use masks is to actually track moving objects. So in this case, I, we wanna add a moon in here. In our project panel, I'm just gonna click and drag in the moon asset provided down in the video description. I'm gonna click S on our keyboard and change this to 50% to scale it down. And to mask the moon, what I'm gonna do is actually draw a circle. So I'm gonna click on my layer here, click and hold down on the rectangle tool and grab our ellipse tool. And to draw a perfect shape, either a perfect perfect circle or a perfect square. What you can do is hold down shift as you drag in the composition panel. So if you click and hold down shift, you'll notice that you draw a perfect circle here. And you can let go, grab your selection tool, and you can move this over the moon. Now I drew it a little big, and what we can do is actually use the mask expansion features to actually bring in the mask a little bit. So we'll just bring this in, maybe realign this a little bit here can actually click and actually make changes to the actual ellipse of itself. And we can feather the edges a little bit to kind of give it a nice glow. And now what we can do is actually animate the mask path to actually follow the moon. So I'm gonna click the stopwatch next to mask path, go forward in time. Next, I'm gonna click on my masks and actually move the mask up here and now when we play this back, you'll notice that we have it followed. Now, obviously, depending on the subject, you'll, you might have to reposition the mask over time, but essentially that's how you can actually animate a moving object using masks. And what we can do is click and drag this, and put it underneath our skyline here. 
Now we have like a moon rising over Cleveland, which is pretty cool. Another way that you can use masks is actually to use it to reveal text or use it as like a transition revealer. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my type tool and we'll type out some text, maybe CLE at night. I'll click on my text and just align this up here. Scale it down by clicking and holding down on the edge. Reposition this. That looks pretty good. And what we can do is actually click on the layer, hold down, go back to our rectangle tool and draw a rectangle around our text. Now I'll go to the beginning of my composition here, go out to about one second or so, and we'll click the stopwatch next to mask path. We'll go to the beginning, and what we can do is actually just click and drag this down. You'll notice when we play this back, we have a nice reveal. And we can even feather this out a little bit if you want it feathered. So it kind of fades on a little bit, which is a pretty cool effect. The other thing we can do, we can maybe add a glow swipe on this text layer. To do that, I'm going to select the text layer, go up to effects and presets, and type in glow. Under stylize, click and drag that to your text. We'll change some of the settings here. Change the radius to 49. And we'll change the glow colors from original to AB colors. We can choose our custom colors. Maybe we'll go with blue colors. There we go, got some nice glow. Now what we can do is click on this layer, go back to our rectangle tool. We'll draw a second mask. And say if you wanted to actually make a rhombus, what you can actually do is click off, click back on the layer, grab your selection tool, and you can actually click on one vertex, click on another, and now you have both vertexes selected. You can actually click and drag this to actually make a rhombus shape. We'll untwirl this layer and we'll go down to feather. We'll actually feather it out a little bit, maybe to and maybe 150 pixels is good. And what we'll do similar to before, we'll, we'll untwirl effects and go down under glow and we'll add another compositing option and choose mask two. That way the glow effect is only inside that second mask. Now we can animate the mask. So we'll go to one second forward, click on the stopwatch and click and drag this mask to the left. Go forward to about two seconds then we can click and drag this mask to the right. And now when we play this back, you'll see that we have a, a wipe on transition with a glow effect over the text. So that's just some of the ways that you can use masks inside Adobe After Effects. Now, if you guys want to learn more, I did post a cool glow neon graphic animation and how to create this type of look. If you want to learn how to create that, a video right up here will be there if you want to learn how to create it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.